I'm about to give you a video that's going to change your life and basically guarantee that you are going to land your dream job. Hello, what's up? It's Emily and welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome back to another episode of the Straight Shooter Recruiter Podcast. If you don't know me, now you know me. I've been a recruiter for over seven years. I am a career coach. I host a charting careers podcast. I make careers content. Girl, I just love careers. Now, if you're not an engineer and you're watching this, fear not. I'm happy to make many more videos for many more industries. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you're looking for. And if you're not 100% confident generally in your interview skills, I've got a whole playlist baby right up here. So click her, let's get on with it. I need a sip of my happy juice. Whatever you believe is in this is what's in this. Nothing wrong with being a little bit basic. Now, before we actually get into the specifics of the engineering side of the world, you need to nail down the basic stuff first. There are some questions where no matter what, you're gonna be asked them in an interview. For example, it's the, why do you want to work here? Tell me a little bit about yourself. What are some of your strengths? What are some of your weaknesses? Regardless of your industry, you better believe you're gonna be asked those questions. So get ready to answer them in a way that is clear and convincing. Now, I'm not gonna walk through the specific formula on how to answer those questions because I have videos breaking down each of those right up here. At this stage, you've got the basics out of the way. It's time to hammer down on the engineering business. Most companies that are going to hire engineers, whether it's a tech company or not, there's two main ways they're going to interview you, either with a live coding exercise or a take home coding exercise. Typically the interview process for mo most companies is between three to five steps, or if you're Facebook, it's nine steps. Yeah, you heard me. They have a nine step interview process. And that to me is crazy, but for the most part, you're probably going to go through like three to five interview rounds. Usually the first round is with a recruiter, someone like myself. And our goal is to get a high level understanding of what your experience looks like, what you might be looking for, and a little bit more information on your tech stack. For the most part, that first round interview is very like values specific. We just want to get to know you and your high level skills. It's not something that's like, you know, going to be super technical or in depth that way. Your next round of interviews is typically a technical interview, whether it's with another engineer or the manager for that position, you're probably going to end up doing some kind of live coding. Nine times out of 10, companies that do live coding interviews are going to ask questions on data structures and algorithms and system design. Now, I'm not saying that's the case for everything. If you're in a more niche role, maybe you're in something like, I don't know, data engineering, where you might be doing something that's more pipeline focused but most full stack backend or front end engineers are going to be asked those style of questions. If you don't know how to prepare for live coding interviews, I would highly recommend checking out websites like LeetCode where they literally have all kinds of live coding questions. And most large tech companies, believe it or not, are using those databases or using those resources to pull their potential interview questions. If you're also interviewing at a relatively large company, you can just Google technical interview questions at Facebook. I love that I'm like entirely picking on Facebook today, but I'm just too lazy to think of something else. And I'm scared I'm going to say my own company's name. Typically the kinds of technical questions you're going to get are going to be directly tied to the job description that they've provided you. So if they've already listed the tech stack on your job description, be ready to use those languages. Come prepared, or if you're not sure, just ask your recruiter what tech stack they're assessing for. Usually what they're looking for is just better insight on how you work. Work. So here are the specific things they're assessing for. Number one, it's your communication. Are you talking through the problem out loud? So over communicate. There is nothing wrong with over communicating. I also want you to ask lots of questions. If you feel like you need more clarity on something, don't be shy. In real life, you can also Google. So ask them, I'm going to ask you this question. I'm not too sure what it is. Or you could say, are you all right if I just do a quick Google search to validate what I'm thinking? It's okay to lean on Google and other resources as you're going through technical interviews reviews as long as you are coding. Just checking my notebook here because I wanted to make sure I don't miss a damn thing. Another thing I'm going to need you to do is just admit when you don't have the answers. Trust me, especially in the technical spaces, you are often going to be working in agile sprints and working with many different teams. And sometimes you're just not going to have all the answers. In fact, you might not even have one answer and that's okay. It's totally fine. I just literally punched you in the face via my mic. I'm so sorry, but really wanted to hammer home 
it's okay for you not to have the answers as long as you're honest about it, dude, it's totally fine. So if you're an engineer and you've covered all of these things and you're curious as to how you can stand out and really take your interview or your application to the next level, here are the things that I would do. Make sure you've got a list of your personal projects on your resume, whether it's linked out via GitHub or another website. Really focus and emphasize your strong communication. One of the number one in-demand skills outside of the hands-on ability to code for technical roles is literally your ability to communicate because more often than not, part of your position is going to be explaining the work that you're doing to non-technical people. So really double down on your ability to explain things in a simple way. It's better for you to slow down, take a breath, explain things simply, and then go deeper if you're probed. So you want to make sure you have a nice balance of, you know, being able to get in the weeds, but not making it so complicated that someone who's non-technical wouldn't understand you. Have a focus on mentorship. Every person who hires an engineer, whether they realize it or not, wants someone who's so strong that they can help develop other people on the team. Even if you are early in your career, this counts for you as well. So make sure you're going out of your way to share opportunities or times where you've supported members of your team, or maybe you've volunteered outside of work. If you've hit this stage and your ass just got an offer, I'm so happy for you. I really am. And you don't know how much you should be getting paid. For the next step in your process, click this video. I'm going to tell you exactly how much money you should be making, how you should be negotiating your salary and all of those good things. I genuinely hope that today's episode was helpful. If it was, make sure you are letting me know in the comments, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you do have questions, you already know I'm going to reply to you. So I'll just, I'll see you there. Okay. Thanks. Bye.